everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we are checking into Pixar Place Hotel, the newest hotel in Disneyland Resort. We'll explore all the fun theming and Easter eggs and give you a tour of our hotel room, which comes with a theme park view. We'll check out the pool area, which has a Finding Nemo themed water slide. And we'll meet characters that are exclusive to only this hotel, including Bing Bong from Inside Out. And we'll take in a breathtaking performance from Joe Gardner from Soul. And we'll grab dinner at the hotel's signature restaurant, The Great Maple. But is it worth your time? And we'll head into the park through a private entrance that's only to Pixar Place Hotel guests and have some fun. Why don't you come with us on this adventure? walked in the doors to the Pixar Place Hotel, and even the doors are kind of magical. I was like noticing that Mike Wazowski is on like a blue panel, and I was like, why is he not on a green panel? But when you walk through the door, he gets reunited with his friend, and he becomes green. How cool is that? And on the other side, you have Woody and Buzz. But what I really love, first impressions walking in, I love this giant concept art kind of like scribbled on the walls. Like, makes for a really good photo op. I love all the little details, like this cast members only sign that has the Monsters Inc. hat. And then look at the fire extinguisher. You got Wally <laughs> with it floating in space. One of my favorite things in every Pixar movie, you know how there's a hidden Pizza Planet truck? Yeah. Well, I just looked down on the floor and actually found a hidden Pizza Planet truck. Pretty cool. I just realized that it actually goes from drawing to like the 3D animated rendering of the Pixar character. That's a nice touch. I like that it's not just the feature animated films, but they also have some nods to the shorts. Like behind the bell desk there. Okay, so we walked in from the parking lot, but the main lobby has Lutzo Jr. lamp and the Pixar ball, and above it, it has a bunch of like stained glass versions of characters, like a simplified versions of the characters. And I don't know, this lobby is actually kind of striking. It's really nice. And the music that they're playing in here is like Pixar music, but like a different version of it, almost like a lo-fi, like yeah. kind of like jazz version of it. And it's just like such a vibe. And then the main door, it has Wade and Ember and they're separated, but as you walk in, they come together, <laughs> just like they did in the movie. Oh my God, I just found probably the best hidden Easter egg little detail that I hope I'm the first to discover. This couch over here looks a lot like Heimlich from A Bug's Life. Is that what they were going for with that? It because is. if so, that is genius. I love that. I gotta say, I even like the rug. If you look down here, there's the lamp and the ball. How cool. <laughs> Bing bong, oh my God. Cool, so cool to see you here. So in the animation process, after they actually make the 3D model of a character, they have to rig it with all these wires. And that's where you get to next. You come to the piano, and if you look up, you'll get the lamps, and they look like a bunch of wires, like they're rigging the, the characters to be animated. I love the seating area in the lobby. They have this Finding Nemo, almost like the storyboard to the movie. And I love the details even in the furniture. Like they have all this really colorful, fun furniture in here. We're waiting for our room to be ready and it's a vibe. <laughs> so across from the check-in desk, there's these display cases that feature maquettes of some of the famous Pixar characters. And they actually make these maquettes in the animation process when they're developing the Pixar films. And it, I wasn't expecting this, but this lobby tells the story of how Pixar creates and animates a character down to the pictures behind the check-in desk, it's of its final frames, final renderings from the films, but these are the moments where the characters experience the most change in the movie. Yeah, I love that. It's like the magic moment in the movie. And it, I love that it tells a story, and I, I really wish they sold these maquettes like in the gift shop, because I would totally buy some of them. Oh look, it's not just a hidden Pizza Planet truck, but it looks like they have characters. Bunch of different characters. One thing I really like about this resort is all the chairs. They're all like mid-century modern and they're all like a little bit more luxe than you would expect from this hotel. They all look super cool and they're comfortable too. We just got in the elevator and it's 
one of those elevators where you push which floor you're going on and then it lights up and you go to that elevator. Well, look at the one that we got. We have, and, oh my God, it's clear. It's like see-through. I was not expecting that for some reason. We have the up house on here. Wow, I don't want to get out. I love that it's flying into the sky. Wait, I don't want to get out. That was too quick. By the way, in this elevator, there's Doug. Oh my God, how cute is that? Oh, look at the carpet even up here. It has like different characters. Yeah, that's a fun little detail that I feel like I never would have noticed. Yeah, so there's Doug, there's the up house, there's Wally, there's Eve. Eve. We got Remy, Mater, Lightning McQueen, Edna Mode, and Jack Jack. I love that, that's such a nice little detail. I love that they're like not completely obvious, but you can tell what they are. Like what is, what is that right that's there? That's Woody, I Oh, think. it's Woody. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I was looking at it upside down. We are in room number 814. Let's see on inside. Oh my god, it's so bright in here. Oh my gosh, we have our own Pixar lamp. I wonder if they sell that in the gift shop. So let's start with the bathroom. Of course. So they always have like these conserved water signs at all the Disney resorts and it's usually like the Little Mermaid or something, but this one is the, the guy from uh, Luca. Luca. <laughs> That's a nice little detail. I love that they took the time to do that. Wow, this is a huge shower. I love the tile work in there. Yeah. I don't know what it has to do with Pixar, but I like, oh, it might be like the waves from Finding Nemo. Okay, well, yeah. There is, everything <laughs> has a theme, Peter, obviously. And I like above the toilet, you have this nice art piece. So what is this from, Wally? Yeah, it's Wally. That is oh, Mo. Mo? Mo. He's cute. I don't Mo. remember him. He makes a noise. He's like, Mo. 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 Love this mirror. Love the light. And of course, you know that we gotta do the flush test. Pretty nice. Powerful yet smooth. I'd give it like a four out of five. <laughs> they have the good shampoo and the good body wash, and it's in the color scheme of this hotel the red, the blue, and the yellow but those are just stickers on top of it. I it wonder is. why this hotel has that color scheme. Oh, is that why? Maybe. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> You're right. But it, I, I, even the packaging like on the shower cap, right across from the bathroom, we have this little area, and I'm guessing this is a closet. Oh wow, pretty big closet, nice. You have, you know, lots of hangers, an ironing board, all the standard stuff that you see in a Disney hotel room. And then I love this coffee bar nook with the ice bucket and look at the coasters for the cups. Oh, we're gonna have to steal those coasters. I know. <laughs> I wanna steal that freaking Pixar lamp. I'm not going to, but I'm just saying they should really sell that in the gift shop too. Yeah. By the way, I like that this bathroom has like a barn door thing. Yeah. And you close it and there's another mirror for nice. you. Nice. Do you think this is like a barn door because of Woody from Toy Story? I think Theming. that's a, I think that's a stretch. Theming. Down here we have a little mini fridge, or actually a pretty big mini fridge, dang, okay. Put all our stuff in there. What do we got in these drawers? Yeah, uh, coffee we stuff. Coffee. Look at that, even the condiment kit is like themed. I feel like they should have Pixar themed coffee, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, look. More cups. More cups and nothing. Oh my God, look at this huge bed and the pillow. Another thing that they should sell at the gift shop. Looks like a normal pillow until you look at the side. That's cool. By the way, these sheets, I'm not sure if you see these oh sheets, but you can actually see, oh, I think you can see it there. This is something that they do on the Disney Cruise Line. They have kind of like hidden Mickeys on the sheets there. Yeah. And this one has hidden Luxo balls. But I love this, the backsplash here. Yeah. So colorful. Out of all these Pixar movies, which one's your favorite? Oh my God, that's hard. I think I'm gonna go with I can't choose. I was gonna say Ratatouille, but then I changed my mind. Coco? I don't know. <sighs> Finding Norm Nemo? Can normally I say Wally, -E, but Wally's -E not up here, so. Yeah. I don't know. I, maybe. <sighs> okay, we don't I mean, have to. Choose. Toy Story. Toy Story. Let us know in the comments down below. What's your favorite Pixar yeah. movie? It's such a hard choice. <laughs> By the way, I like that these beds each have their own side table. Oh, look at this alarm clock. Can you charge your phone on there? Is that what that is? I think so. Wow, fancy. Fancy. Ooh, and these little lights that pop out, I think. Yeah, nice. light that pops out, and then you got a bunch of different outlets, right? Yeah, so many different outlets over here. And over on the right-hand side, they have the phone, they have more outlets, and also you can control all the light lights just from your bed. And they even have like a little sketch pad, so if you, you're feeling creative and you need to write 
down a number or something. Draw it all right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this couch right here. I don't know what this couch is going for, but I like the the color. Yeah, I think it's just a bright, you know, they wanted to find a red couch. Yeah. You know us, we don't usually like try to find things wrong with hotel rooms, but I gotta say, this is a new hotel room and this right here does not look great. I don't know what happened, but the paint's already peeling. The positive to that is though, this is the strongest, loudest, most efficient <laughs> air conditioning that I'm not even joking, that I've ever seen in any Disney hotel room. Like literally it was 72 in here and I turned it down to 66 and it is pumping the air out. You could probably hear it like, yeah. and it feels nice. Usually like you, you turn the temperature down and it takes like, it takes a little bit of time. This is like, all right, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> so right next to the couch, there is the blinds. Let's Ooh. see what our view is. We have like a theme park view, I think. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Do you think we could see World of Color from here? Maybe. This is such a cool view. I'm so used to seeing the parks like from the other side because we never really come over to this side of the resort. And you could see into Disney California Adventure, right? Where Pixar Pier is. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to walk over there later because they even have like a special entrance that only this hotel can access, which is pretty cool. And they have like a little coffee table. It's like situated a bit far away <laughs> from the couch. I'm not sure what, what the purpose. I guess you could drag it over to me. There you go. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you again, who's your favorite on this? I've got a clear answer. Obviously sadness. She is my eternal mood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably say like Mike and Sully. Right below the TV, there's this nice big desk area, and they have this really cool art of Pixar book, I'm assuming. And then if you're wondering where the safe is, that's actually hidden right down here. Don't tell anyone. It's a fake drawer. What is this right here? Pixar Place Hotel. Oh, it has, oh, there's like some free postcards and stuff. And then it tells you about the parks of the hotel. Lost and found. The story of the hotel. We're gonna have to read that. Dining options. Cool. It's a little concept art from Up. Yeah. But they're trying to get you to join uh, Disney Vacation Club. Is well, this is on. the same concept art that's actually behind the bed. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're See? right. That's pretty neat. I bet you can't find that anywhere else. Oh, that's funny. The book actually says on it, for in-room use only. Then if you open it up, it says this book is available for purchase in store E, located in the lobby. If this book should happen to find its way into your luggage, a hundred dollar charge will be added to your folio. Oh, and look, the carpet underneath the bed also has the Luxo lamp on it. You know what I noticed? The room occupied sign. Yeah, look at it. Oh my God, that is us. That's you, that's me. We're monsters. So this is the cheapest on-site hotel at Disneyland currently, and it still costs like 400 to $600 a night for a standard room depending on the night and the time of the year. All right, so now we're gonna go check out the newly renovated pool and outdoor area. I got a glimpse of it through the window and it looks really cute. Wow, it's like a huge space out here. So before you get to the pools, they actually have like a deck of fun games for kids to play and they're all themed after Pixar shorts, including La Luna. Like there's like a shuffleboard where you hit the, the stars. Yeah and bow, I think you toss the little bow buns into yeah, the little- Yeah, it's kind of like cornhole. And right behind us, there's actually even some chess tables. <gasps> From Remember? Jerry's game. Yeah, this is making, it looks like I'm crying right now, but it's just because I have very sensitive <laughs> eyes in the wind. But like this, it's called the Animation Shorts Court. Like, oh. that is so fun. There's a short over there called Burrow that I don't remember. It must be on one of the newer movies that I haven't gotten a chance to see yet. But I haven't seen cute. that one either. The fact that it's not just a normal shuffleboard, you know what I mean? They took the time to make it unique and something that you can't do anywhere else. Yeah, did you see the two umbrellas? The blue umbrella? I know. Like, <laughs> I, w I want to get my photo next to them. So far, Kitra does, has not gotten a score. It's hard. So right across from the shorts court, there is a food place called Small Bites. It's not open yet, even though the hotel is open, but it looks like they have some like little snackable things like bagel pizzas. Yeah, it's not fair because they have the menu up there and I'm like super hungry and it's not open yet. <laughs> but I like that they have a mural here and it's all like tile, but it looks like eight bit. Yeah, Bites, get it, B-Y-T-E-S. Yeah. 
And this is also where you can find the uh, the umbrellas right there. Yeah. Oh my God. So up here there's this lounging area and they have a bunch of different themed fire pits all themed around Pixar fire characters. There's the volcano from the I Lava You Short. There's of course Anger from Inside Out. We have Ember from Elemental and Jack Jack from Incredibles 2 or Incredibles 1 and 2. But this is so cool. Wow. Yeah. That's some details I wasn't expecting. I'm like, my mind is being blown. Like I didn't, to be completely honest, I didn't have very high expectations for this hotel. And I think they did like a really good job. We finally made our way into the actual pool area. And do you know what this pool is called? It's, ca it's called the Pixel Pool. Oh we have really? A, yeah, we have a dog named Pixel. I just thought happy. it was, but I don't see her anywhere like represented in this artwork. I should just like sneak a photo of her somewhere. Just kidding. So what is the theme of this pool? Because they have some travel posters from Luca, and I think I see some Finding Nemo over there. Yeah. Looks like there's a Finding Nemo like whole like splash pad area for little kids. The pixel, pixel pool. So cute. <laughs> so they have a lot of loungers that are free, but if you want to pay some money, they have some pods, which cost $130 a day. The day beds are $160 a day, and then the cabanas are like $425 a day. Wow. We're here during the winter, and it's kind of <laughs> chilly. I'm actually surprised that there's people in the pool right now. Yeah, we brought our bathing suits, but I don't yeah. know if I actually want to go in. Maybe we'll go to the like the hot tub later. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's check out these, the splash pad. So this little area is called Nemo's Cove. It's a little splash pad, and we got Hank here from Finding Dory. I know a lot of people don't like that movie, but I like that Hank's getting his due. The artwork inside of the splash pad is so good, and I love that we even have the otter from Finding Nemo 2. Or Finding Dory. What was that movie called? Finding Dory. Finding Dory, yes. We got the otter, my favorite character. And right above this little splash pad area, they actually have Crush's surfing slide, which looks pretty fun, and it actually like makes the noises like Crush talking to you. He's like, righteous! Oh yeah! Like as you slide down, which is like such a nice little touch. Is that what he sounds like? Righteous! I don't know. At first I thought it was just like some guy up there yelling it as he was going down the slide, but I think it's actually like pumped out over the speakers. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was some guy like yelling, dude! Dude, whoa! Gotta ride the ECC. No, the E. The current. <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Listen, I need to get to the East Australian Current, EAC. Oh, dude. You're riding it, dude! I feel like it's all about the little details here. Like, look at these two planters. Who does it remind you of? Let me know in the comments below. Here's a little pro tip for you. Come up to the second level, and you have an amazing view of all these stained glass art pieces that are hanging. And one thing that I didn't notice earlier is the lights in here actually change and they kind of go along with the melody of whatever song is playing. Yeah. That's like that's a nice touch. So many small details here at this hotel that like at first glance you don't notice. Yeah. <laughs> and I also heard that these versions of the characters are like the basic versions of the characters when Pixar starts coming up with a story, they'll make things in just like the basic shapes like squares, circles, <laughs> triangles. It's like me when I draw. <laughs> <laughs> but just to figure it out and get the essence of the characters. So that's what these represent. Yeah. And I think once the sun is coming through here and hitting the stained glass, it's gonna look awesome. So at the Pixar Place Hotel, it's the only place in the world currently that you can meet Bing Bong from Inside Out. And he's coming out now, so we're gonna go meet him. Why am I so excited? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were so big and fluffy, I love, I love it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> How cool is this photo op? <laughs> I know. Absolutely. Hello. Oh, you're so special, you too. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. So we just met Bing Bong. Tell me why I was so excited. He has glitter in his cotton candy fur. I feel like the only thing that would make it even better is if he smelled like cotton candy somehow. Because yeah. when you meet Lotso, he smells like strawberries. But that is such a cool character costume. Yeah. And I love that it's exclusive, literally just if you're staying at this hotel. But... Actually, you don't protest. Yeah, you don't actually need to be staying here. If you want to walk over here and come meet him, I feel like there's not a line. No one really knows that he's here. And it's a great photo op with like the Pixar ball in the background. Yeah. I love that. I, did a butt check for me. He did. I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> He did a little twirl. I loved him. And he was like dancing and everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's so cool. Yeah. And I, you can also meet him up on the pool deck sometimes, and there's like a whole setup. Hopefully we can do that tomorrow. Yeah, it's kind of like an overcast rainy day today, so I think that's why they don't put him out there. But I almost feel like this photo op is better on the inside. Yeah, look who <laughs> I found. I found Hank. So when I wrote about film for a living, I was lucky to go to Pixar Animation Studios a bunch. And one of the things I loved on the restroom signs, for men they had Woody, and for women they had Bo Peep. And I love that they have brought that over to this hotel. There's two dining locations here. There's a sit-down restaurant called Great Maple, and then there's the sketch pad, which is only open in the morning. We might have to check it out tomorrow. Yeah, I was gonna say, we missed it already. They have like lattes and stuff here. Yeah, but I'm looking at the wall and one of the cast members t told me a secret about this whole mural on the wall mm -hmm. and it's cool. What it is, is a map of all of Pixar's movies. So it starts at the Luxo lamp, goes to Toy Story, goes to Monsters, Inc., oh, goes wow. to Finding the, and if you follow it along, it leads all the way to the other wall over there, all the way up to Turning Red. Okay, I love that, but where's Bugs Life? <laughs> Are they trying to erase Bugs Life from his existence? Yeah, there's some big <laughs> Bug Life eraser here. <laughs> Another thing I learned is these lamps are supposed to represent the memory balls from Inside Out. Oh, look at that. They have a TV here playing the old Pixar shorts. Actually, the original, the first one. So of course, Pixar Place Hotel has a store. It's called Store E, kind of like Wally. But I guess it could also be about Story. Store E, Wally. Eva. They actually have some Pixar Place Hotel merch, which I was not expecting. Yeah, would you buy a shirt with the Pixar Place logo on it? Mm, probably not, but it's. I like that it's here. <laughs> I do like the design on it. Like it, it's like a sketch design of the Luxo lamp on top of the Pixar ball. And here's the book that if you steal, they charge you a hundred bucks and oh, they sell it $60 in the gift shop. Yeah, so just buy it in the gift shop. So why are they charging a hundred dollars? Because they don't want people to steal. They want to punish you. Don't be a bad person. Just come down here and buy it. They sell it here. There's also a Pixar Place Hotel magnet and pin and even a tumbler. I like the red. Me too. I'm actually kind of surprised at how big this store is for like being a hotel gift shop. Yeah, and half of it seems to be dedicated all to Pixar merch and then the rest is just generic Disneyland merch. Yeah. I like that. This Lotso shirt over here looks like something you'd find in Japan. Yeah, that's cute. Now I think one of the best kept hidden secrets at Disney are these art on demand kiosks. You can find them at most of the resorts and they have exclusive art that you can't get anywhere else. So I don't think this stuff is exclusive to this hotel, but I like this design actually. <laughs> it reminds me of the 90s. It does, and look at these ears too. These must be new. Yeah. I don't remember seeing them before. I like that they not only have merch for the feature films, but they also have merch for the shorts. I don't know if this is intentional or not, but even the displays here, is this kind of like, Carl's like, you know how his, his whatever the thing that he pushes yeah. has tennis balls on the bottom? Is that what this is? I think so. This is genius. That's a great detail. Yeah. I was like looking at it and I was like, wait a second, that's intentional. Oh, it, it totally is. Because yeah. look at that. It looks like it's a it's handle. A pain. Wow. You know what that is? It's righteous. Righteous. I just noticed in this corner of the store, there's a little desk for little kids that they can be coloring in some Pixar characters while they're Disney adults shop. So they have a guest book here. It's in Carl's My Adventure book and people sign it from all over the world. So we learned that there is a sticker you can get here. If you can find Forky, they hide him around the store. Oh. You'll get the sticker. You know where I'd look? Oh, it's not that one? Not Out of the packaging? <laughs> okay. Um, you know where I'd look? Yeah. Where? In the trash. In the trash, oh, okay. No. We've been looking around the whole shop trying to find Forky. We can't find him. And apparently they hide him different places, different days. So it's not like if you know the location, you can cheat and get that sticker. You got to find him. Oh, so he's over there? So he's over there somewhere. I found him. I'm not going to tell Kitcher where he is. So I'm never gonna find him. You'll find him. Is he like hidden in something or is he no, visible? He's visible. Yeah. <laughs> Please, I don't You'll find see him. him. He's up high. Oh, there he is. 
I found him. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's so Go funny. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. He found it first. So yeah. Each one of the floors here has a different mural for a different Pixar film. This one's turning red. Yeah. See, now I wish that we could meet the big red panda. That would be a cool meet and greet thing. That's a good question. What Pixar characters that are not yet out in the parks would you like to see Disney bring to Pixar Place or to us? Maymay the panda. Well, I think Maymay. Forky. Forky, too. Okay. Could you imagine a life size Forky doing a meet and greet? <laughs> That'd be scary. That would be terrifying. Yeah. But I think Maymay might actually be overseas at some point, one of the parks. I think I saw it in one of Disney Dan's videos. I just also noticed that our light right here is the Luxo Ball. I'm actually surprised by this hotel so far. I thought it was gonna be a simple remodel and they were gonna actually do it very cheaply themed, but they, it seems like they've actually put a lot of thought into the details and we were just back in a room and I noticed the backboard for the TV extends to the ceiling. It's like little stuff like that, you know costs a little bit extra and I'm glad that they spent the money. We were just walking through the lobby and no one was waiting for Bing Bong, so you're just like playing with some stools. And uh, it, was, it was funny, sad. Yeah, I think it reminded him of the memory orbs from the movie. <laughs> or I mean, from his real life. I yeah. mean, from Riley's brain. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Where are we going now? So now we're gonna grab dinner at the restaurant here called Grey Maple. I am so hungry, I'm excited. So usually when you go to a Disney hotel or resort, they have restaurants that are made by Disney. But for whatever reason, Disney this time decided to bring in a popular chain. That's Grey Maple. They're a modern American eatery. And I like the aesthetics. It's kind of like farm meets modern. I love that at the bar, there's like a couple's chair where you can sit together at the bar together. Why didn't we sit there together? Uh, well, we got a table. <laughs> I will say the theming for Pixar is a little weak. They have some pictures on the wall, black and white pictures. I love it. It almost looks like they're like, the, these characters have died and we're like memorializing them. <laughs> it's a little it's, strange. It's very strange, that's why I like it so much. <laughs> I noticed the lights here, they actually look like a whisk. Is that because they're like making the donuts with them or something? Donuts, the pancakes. Yeah, they're famous for their maple bacon donuts here, so we're obviously gonna have to get those and a bunch of other stuff as well. We're gonna start our evening out with some cocktails. I got myself the espresso martini. This has espresso, vodka, Kahlua, Baileys. I always feel like I gotta drink like a drink like this with my pinky out for some reason. Mm. Wow, you know it's good when I go, wow. <laughs> it's like my signature instantly five out of five. Tastes like I'm drinking a sweet cold brew coffee. Just the right amount of sweetness mixed with the coffee flavor. Absolutely delicious. And for my cocktail, I got the maple bacon old fashioned. This is bacon washed bourbon, maple syrup, bitters, and thick cut smoked bacon. And they're known here for their maple bacon donuts. So I thought maple bacon old fashioned right down my alley. You gotta get something with maple in it. Yeah. I can tell you it smells like, like uh, sugared bacon or something like that. It smells really good. And it has like like round cube ice cubes. I, I love when they do that for like old fashions. That's one of the sweetest old fashions I've ever had. It is very strong, but it's surprisingly sweet, even though you definitely get that smoked bacon taste in there. I give it a five out of five, you know. It's expensive, but it's a good drink. So we decided to order off of the brunch menu because they serve brunch here all day. And we got an appetizer. We got these things called pancake pops and it's their take on pigs in a blanket. And it comes with maple syrup, salted caramel, and whipped cream. And in my mind, I thought it was gonna be like a cake pop, like a little bite-sized thing. Yeah. But they look like corn dogs. And don't judge me, I put my napkin in here because I'm wearing white for like the first time ever and I just know. These look so messy, they look like beignets. There's like powdered sugar everywhere. Like, what did we do? They also have beignets here, by the way. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, these are these are so cute. They're like little little corn dogs, little pancake corn dogs. Should I do one of each? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, what am I doing? That's the way God intended. Is it? Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, cheers. So on the inside here is actually a breakfast sausage. I don't know why in my mind I thought it was gonna be an actual hot dog. I think there's a reason why this is like one of the favorite items here. It is so good. It tastes like a deep fried, something you get like at the fair, like a deep fried Twinkie or something, except it's a pancake. Yeah. I'm gonna give this a five out of five. I think this is a genius invention and they should win awards for this. <laughs> you know, usually when you get corn dogs at Disneyland, the outside of it's like crispy. This is like fluffy and soft. It's amazing. Whoever thought of this should get a ring. For my entree, I got the lemon shrimp pasta. This is fettuccine, shrimp, tomatoes, parsley, garlic, lemon butter, white wine, chili flakes, and shredded parmesan. It sounded so good. And let me tell you, it also smells absolutely divine. It has a little bit of a kick to it because of those chili flakes on there. It's not too garlicky, it's not too lemony, it's just like the perfect amount of both. I love myself a good fettuccine, a good shrimp fettuccine. So this is hitting the spot right now. I think this was a good choice. I'm gonna give it like, I'll give it like a four out of five. It's not the best that I've ever had, but it's, it's pretty good. For my entree, I ended up getting the hot honey fried chicken sandwich. And this seems like a big sandwich. I know that they're known for like their chicken here, their fried chicken. Like their signature dish we're actually not getting is the fried chicken and donuts. But we're gonna get the donuts, so I'm having the fried chicken. So <laughs> we're kind of having it, right? Well, like I said in a different video, you are my hut honey, so it was only it was fitting that you needed to get, to get this. Look at that. Wow. Did we really need two pieces of chicken there? That looks like a big bite. I don't know what. I don't know how I'm gonna, okay. This is pretty good. The fried chicken is crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. That aioli is sweet, also spicy, just like my honey right there. <laughs> Two to four out of five. Took the bib off. Gotta put it back on for this. I don't know what we're doing here. We had to get their signature item, the maple bacon donuts, and this comes with three donuts and their signature sauce and it smells like real freshly cooked bacon right on top there. Oh God, these are thick boys. Wow, they're, they, they're heavy. This is unlike any donut that I've ever had before. It's almost like a biscuit. It's not like a, a fake sugary syrup. It's real maple syrup and real bacon. Both things I love, but something got lost along the way. I think we must have just got a bad batch. I don't even want to waste my calories on these. I feel bad saying that because I was like so excited to try these. But like, if I was you, maybe skip these and just get the, the pancake pops. Yeah, you're right. It's like hard on the top. The flavor of the maple bacon isn't really that pleasing. I don't think I'd get these again. How did they mess these up? <laughs> I don't know. I'd give it like a, a one out of five, Peter. Wow. Did you hear that? Not, I can't even bite into it. I feel like a donut shouldn't smell like that. That's all I gotta say. I wasted putting on my bib for nothing. So our meal added up to a grand total of $165, and it's after a Magic Key discount. And then we gave like a big tip, so it was $200 for yeah. this meal. Not quite sure it's worth it, personally. I feel like it's a little bit overpriced, but I mean, everything at the Disneyland Resort is expensive. But you could walk away from Lamplight Lounge for like... I feel like, yeah, other restaurants are just worth it. That's all I'm saying. Some of our stuff was good. Other stuff wasn't. I was gonna say, it's almost like we got those donuts for free, but the donuts were $18. And we didn't even complain. And we paid for them. But I think we just got like $10 off. So the donuts were like half off. I'm not sure I would prefer this over something across the street at Disney California Adventure. Like, would I rather come over here than Lamplight Lounge? No. Carte <laughs> Circle? No. A food festival over there? No. Disneyland Hotel has the Breezeway, has Trader Sam's. I think I'd rather both of those, maybe even Craftsman. But if I was staying here, I might eat breakfast or come here after like a day in the park. But I don't think this is a destination. I found Arlo 
from Good Dinosaur. So they have everybody represented. They do. I was going to say, where's the Good Dino representation? We found them right by the door. And we found Socks the Cat here on the floor, right across from this little piano over here. We heard that Joe Gardner from Seoul actually plays nightly sets here in the lobby. So we're going to wait for him to come out. I'm excited. <laughs> for going into the zone with me. And remember, life is full of possibilities. We just need to know where to look and hang on to your spark. Did we just watch Joe have this exact moment in real life? How awesome was that? He's so good. And I kept talking to him. I don't think we caught it on camera. I kept like being like, good job, Joe. You're great, Joe. And he was just like, well, thank you so much. It makes me want to rewatch that movie. He's good. That is amazing that you can not only meet him, but he's playing music. He's he has his briefcase. He has his little props on the the piano, and like kids were going up and like, getting photos with him. And my, the only thing I would say is like, there is no listing of when he performs. So no one knows he's going to be here. It's like kind of a surprise thing, and I think they should list the times. My only thing that they could do differently is like he should like transform into a cat like mid-performance. Yes. Isn't that what happens in the movies? Like in the soul of a cat? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm in the cat! Just in case you're wondering, the soundtrack for this hotel is available on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music. It's 10 songs. It's actually very cool. Okay, what is this song? Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's from Turning Red. Yes, it's Four Town. <laughs> the outside of the hotel looks a lot better at night with all the colorful lights. During the daytime, it just looks so plain and it's just like white and black, but it's almost like it comes to life at night. <laughs> I agree with you. It looks a lot better at night, and we decided to cross the street and check out our exclusive entrance into the park. So you walk across the street to where the Grand Californian entrance is, and then you have an exclusive gate that gets you into the park. This might be the most private entry to a Disney theme park in the entire world. Like, look at how few people there are here. I know. It's, I feel like I'm like, should I be back here? It almost feels wrong. It's so quiet. So you enter Disney California Adventure Park right next to Corndog Castle, right across from the Golden Zephyr. And literally there was no line. The people that were working there was like, this is a better entrance than the Grand California entrance. Yeah. Like if I was, this was my shift, I'd be so happy to be the person checking <laughs> tickets over here because you'd just be chilling the whole time. Nobody ever goes through this way. This might be the most solid benefit of staying at Pixar Place Hotel. But the question is, is a hotel room there still worth five, six hundred dollars. You know, coming from the Pixar Place Hotel, it occurs to me that Disney California Adventure has been taken over by Pixar. You got San Francisco, you have Pixar Pier, you have Cars Land, you have Coco over at Phil Arm Magic. There's like so much Pixar. Yeah, and is there anything better than Cars Land at night after it's rained? Just makes it even prettier.
after the fireworks show, it's complete cluster. Not this time. Not this time. We literally like walked out. We were one of only three people we saw. And we were out and we're crossing the street back to our hotel. This is the life, man. I could get used to this. <laughs> the next day. Gotta say, this bed was pretty comfortable. Yeah. I slept like a baby. <laughs> I did not want to wake up this morning. It was like a, a cloud. You you slept like Jack Jack. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Pixar reference. There we go. Yeah, this is a nice room. I enjoyed it. <laughs> but it's time to say goodbye. We decided to come down to Sketchpad Cafe this morning to get some coffee and grab a little bite to eat. And I was just looking at the menu and it says that you could put edible rainbow glitter like on top of your coffee. That is so like amazing to me, I might have to do it. Yeah. And they got pizza bagels. Ooh. Oh my gosh, they do? Yeah, I might have to get one. Oh yeah, you gotta get one for sure. Their chocolate chunk cookie. Oh, look at this brownie right next to it. Oh my god, wow. So I think these are made by Great Maple. I ordered myself the London Fog, and what this is is Earl Grey tea, steamed milk, and vanilla syrup, and of course now I had to put the rainbow glitter on top. I normally order a coffee, but I was just in the mood for tea this morning and the rainbow glitter is so pretty. It's kind of like rainbow sprinkles. I love it, so colorful. And she did say, I think you have to wait like three minutes or something for your tea bag to seep in there. I think it's been three minutes. The edible glitter makes this even better. This is quite tasty with that vanilla syrup. I like it. I'd give it like a four out of five. <laughs> And for breakfast, I decided to get myself the pizza bagel. I got the pepperoni version. You can get all cheese. But I thought, let's, let's put some spice on top. And when I was a kid, I used to make, not pizza bagels, but I used to make the uh, English muffin Oh my god, thing. me too. My mom used to love, like we used to get together and like she'd like let me put on like the mozzarella and all that stuff oh and god, build it. Oh my god, we should it. do that. We yeah. should bring that back. That was so fun. Yeah. Okay, let's try the pizza bagel. This is simple. There's nothing like fancy about this, but biting into this pizza bagel transports me back to my childhood. Aww. And for that, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Yeah. Now it probably, food-wise, it's probably like a three and a half. It just hits the spot. Yeah. Since I am a millennial, it is my millennial duty to order avocado toast whenever I see it on a menu somewhere, right? So I saw that they had some avocado toast and I was in the mood. And it has a bunch of stuff on top, look like a hard boiled egg, some tomatoes, some like poppy seeds and stuff. It looks pretty good actually. Yeah, it's pretty fancy. When I make my avocado toast at home, I literally just like smash the avocado, put it on top and maybe put like a little pepper. This is way fancier. I was worried that because this was sitting around that it wasn't gonna be that good. And while the bread is a little bit soggy, the flavor is there. And this is actually really, really good. I like it a lot. I'm starting to think that I need to put like more spices on my <laughs> avocado toast at home. And I'd give it a four out of five. What are you doing over here, Bing Bong? Hanging out. Doing hi to all our friends. <laughs> oh. Bing oh. Bing Bong. oh, where? Oh. I didn't even see that one. <laughs> it's like this little Hollywood star walk of fame. <laughs> I'm learning so much from cast members. I just learned that the photos on the wall in the restaurant are hung up on the executives' walls at Pixar. And because they worked with Pixar, they came over here to the restaurant. That said, it's kind of a shame that they don't have a Pixar character breakfast here. That would be like amazing. I should make it all green for Peter.
you want to see another new hotel at Disneyland Resort, we just stayed at the Disneyland Villas. We'll put the video right over there. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Krista, Arlene, and MK. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.